Welcome to Manufacturing Talk Radio. Good afternoon, everyone. Lou Weiss again at the Motion and Power Technology Expo in Detroit, Michigan. I'm going to be saying that in my sleep, I think. Uh, it's a great show, meeting great people. And uh, I'm here with uh, Gilbert Gonzalez, who's with uh, Clifford Jacobs Forging Company. Hello, everyone. And uh, he's sort of a competitor, but we're all friendly competitors. We're all friends here. Yeah. yeah. So thank you for joining Yeah. Us. Thank you, sir. Okay. Yes. So tell us a little bit about uh, Clifford. Yeah, so we're in um, located in uh, Champaign, Illinois, um, about 120 employees. Uh, our product is closed eye, uh, near net forgings uh, made out of um, really all the forgeable alloys. Uh, so all the steels, um, titanium, nickel alloys, 718, things like that. Um, like a, m minus aluminum. I, I would say that's not your favorite. <laughs> it, it, it could uh, it could wreak havoc yeah. on a hammer. So um, we we utilize um, steam powered drop hammers. Right. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, up up to what size can you forge? I'd say we can do forgings up to about a thousand pounds. So relatively right. small. Yeah. In the yeah. scope of things, but. Um, 800 to 1,000 pounds, obviously depending on uh, the well, alloy. Yeah. Does that include rings? We can do forged rings. Uh, on, a obviously, ring, on a ring mill or? Uh, all we have is hammers. Okay. Closed eye, okay. uh, no ring rollers, no presses. Okay. Um, so obviously any uh, more thin wall right. rolled ring, we cannot produce that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We'll leave that to the ring rollers. So that means that Clifford uh, has been around how long? Over 100 years, so yeah. since 1919. Yeah. Um, you don't look that old. No, no, I've only been working there for three years. So, <laughs> But I, I have worked in the industry, forging, machining, et cetera, uh, for over 20, um, mostly with PCC, which I'm no you're aware of so yes, yes. so uh, i forgot to mention that you are the sales manager correct sales manager uh for clifford jacobs yes right right well that's um, good uh so why don't we educate uh, our listeners a bit uh i mean we've had a lot of people on our show uh why don't you educate our listeners who don't know uh some of the benefits of uh forging yeah, I mean, as opposed to raw products and such. Yeah, so in in a, in the forging process, you do develop the correct grain flow that will be a better suit for the application. Right. Um, and the other, I think, I, I, it's really two huge benefits: the the strength component and also the weight savings component, <clears throat> which gets really significant when you're talking about. 718 or titanium oh, sure. every pound you save is golden so you you reduce the input weight because of the near net right. configuration right. and in tandem you reduce machining you re so in tandem you reduce the machining time of our client of our clients right so it's just not only they, they save money on metal they right. save money on machine time and I mean, there are, there is some investment to that. Yeah. Uh, well, but minimal. Well, it could it could be uh, it it could be expensive, but like you said, it's minimal based on the payoff. It's it's almost immediate payoff for, right. for the tool. Right. Yeah. I mean, if I wanted a for if I wanted a forged string, uh, twenty inch OD, ten inch ID, uh, and I have to start with a solid disc, and I have to machine out that ten inch ID right. of titanium right. that's going for twenty dollars a pound. That's right. Plus the machining. That's right. Oh yeah. You're getting the part for free. That's right. So it's it's a lot of benefits, uh, with with lots of money uh, sa money savings there. Sure. Yep. Sure. So uh, 
the trend in, in the forging industry, uh, I mean, a lot of the ring rollers, for example, those are just one great big robot that makes rolled rings. Well, I, I wouldn't say, I mean, it, it, ring mills, uh, they're, they're typically, especially for the uh, more difficult to forge alloys, like yeah. if you're making a big 718 ring, right. a big contoured wasp alloy ring, it's not automated. It is absolutely not. Yeah. I mean, you have operators changing very, yeah. depending on how the ring is moving and other factors. I mean, you, sure. I, don't, I don't know. I'm not an operator, but I mean, there are operators in the ring mill that. You've been in the shop. Oh, 20 <laughs> years. Yeah. No, I know they're in there moving things around and make sure the ring doesn't bounce around or scrap it or because yeah. these things are 20 grand a piece or something. So it's expensive to scrap a wasp alloy ring. At twenty bucks, it's a disastrous. Pack. Not yeah. it's not it's it's a. I mean, when you scrap a thirty forty thousand dollar piece part, piece of yeah. apart, yeah, it's Absolutely. it's uh, not gonna, cool. Somebody's gonna lose the job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but I mean, they have the, especially the ring rollers. They do have uh, the technology to prevent that. Sure. So, uh, why and where? Are forging is used primarily? Um, it, primarily, they are used on the power plants that go on uh, commercial aircraft, military aircraft. Right. So you have, I mean, up and down the jet engine, you have, you know, the fan case all the way down to the turbine case. And in the middle, you have the combustion case. All those cases are made through the forging process. Right. Um, and then, so that's all containment applications right. in a jet engine. Um, and the alloy depends on, you know, the operating temperature. Right. Uh, so steel and titanium in the cold section, and then you have wasp alloy 718 in the, in, in the back end, in, in, the, in the turbine section, hot section. What I've also found interesting over the, decades that I'm doing this is that forgings are used in a lot of places not necessarily typical that the man on the street even knows about. So for example there's a museum in Manhattan New York and they, the building uh, the second, third and fourth floor jutted out and down below they needed a two or three 20 inch diameter columns to effectively hold the building up. And then, important. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's important. And then it was, it was solid steel, no ID. And then they sprayed it with a cement like finish. Mm -hmm. And it looked like it was cement, mm -hmm. but it was, it was a forging and, uh, I've gone down to look at it a couple of times. I said, it's still holding up. Uh, the Ferris wheel in Las Vegas. Uh, yeah. That big Ferris wheel. I kind of remember it. <laughs> we made the ring, that the two rings that hold that up. Okay. Huge, huge. Kind of important, too. Yeah. And, uh, and of course, in the automotive field, uh, shipbuilding, uh so on. The, the really, like you said, very different applications for forgings. Right. I mean, over my career, I've mo mostly been uh, supporting aerospace aircraft, satellite yeah. systems, launch systems. So maybe not many of that kind of one-off kind of situation. Right. So, um, but I, I mean, I think they're used in extremely cool applications yeah right like oh, j west satellite i mean it, it, i really pre cool. i presume that you are iso and as uh 9000 certified that's right so we clifford jacobs uh supplies northrop direct right boeing direct uh spacex yeah so as 9100 yes yeah. of course yeah. mm -hmm. it's uh you almost can't do business in manufacturing today without at least AS-9100. Not in aerospace. Right. Well, 
aerospace, you need the AS. Right. But in standard manufacturing, it's the ISO. It's ISO, and uh, it basically runs my company. And all of our employees, they gave us a hard time when we were going for ISO certification in the 90s. And today, they say we couldn't run the business without you, you, it. You, they, you, won't, you won't get a sniff. You, you won't get an order. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And in aerospace, you won't get an order without oh, AS9100. Absolutely. That's right. Absolutely. That's right. So uh, how do you see the, the trends going forward uh, for Clifford uh, or the forging industry per se? Yeah, I think that um, – especially on the power plant side of the commercial aircraft. I mean, Boeing and Airbus, they're only thinking of increasing their build rate. Right. I mean, Airbus, and this is all, I mean, they're thinking of going to 60 to 70 uh, yeah. single aisles per month. Boeing's thinking about going to 50 a month. I mean, it's, it's, it's all trending up. Yeah. So you need many four jeans for that i forgot this paris air show this past year yeah i was there yeah what was the record sale that boeing took uh, airbus oh was that oh, uh, airbus. Uh, airbus sold to an indian airline yes yes something like 500 yeah, a320s it, it, it or it was a record big, it was a record the record yeah. um pratt engines or well they have an option but mostly pratt engines yes. so like i say just it's trending up, I guess. I mean, who knows with everything going on? Right. But right. it's defi definitely on the, for, from the, for the forging product in general, it's, it's gonna trending continue. up. It's going to continue. I've, yep. re I've read a lot of reports uh, recently, uh, especially from the Forging Industry Association and others, uh, Forgings are definitely here to stay. Um, well, he just he, he, there's no technology yet, or in the next generation that will replace forging. It's just not going to happen. They've tried it. Well, three D printing. Yeah. If they can get the technology going to the point where they can make them bigger, you know. You, I, mean, I mean, they they built a bridge in Europe. A three D a three D printed bridge. Mm -hmm. I saw the film what, that they were m making it while it's going over the water. Yeah, a build a, a build a, a, a bridge is static. Yes, yes. <laughs> it's not rotating at two thousand RPM. Right. <laughs> right. 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 So, it, I mean, like I said, we don't have it yet, and but I just don't see anything replacing forgings for not a likely. generation. Not likely. Not likely. I don't think so. Yeah, uh, 3D printing is interesting. And, you know, some companies do. I mean, they print titanium. They print yes. 718. Or, but you just can't get the, the characteristics of a forged. Right, right. Yet. There's, always, just, there's always tomorrow. That's why I asked the question about tomorrow. I, I, like I, said, I think in the next generation, I would say we're okay. Yeah. After that, I'll go somewhere else to work. Yeah. Right. Or be rich. Or be rich. I don't know. Go to Costa Rica or Panama. <laughs> it's safe. It's quiet. Sell coconuts. Right on the beach, <laughs> or sell jewelry on the beach. That's. I mean, it's, it can be better than Detroit, right? So. Yeah, it can't be better. No, Detroit. this is, city's great. Uh, I did notice while we we're here speaking about Detroit, uh, and I didn't know or understand why there were so few cars. Hardly any taxi cabs and no Uber. And I noticed that this, the parking lots were empty. And I finally thought about it. It must have something to do with the auto strike. Ah, nobody's parked. Nobody's working. Nobody's working. I, I, I saw it last night from my hotel room. I said, where are all the people? And then it dawned on me, the strike, which they'll get what they want and they'll be back. You know, the, the unions have, uh, you know, they have a lot of leverage right now, yes, obviously. Yeah. I mean, everybody is renewing their contract and striking. And the right. la labor in the U.S. is very strong right now. Yes. So, and, and it should be. Yeah. I mean, you know, the, they make the product. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. Should get paid. Uh, should get paid fairly. Is uh, is Clifford Jacobs uh, a union shop? Yes, they are. Oh yeah. Okay. Yes, they are. Um, okay. Um, do you have any parting words for us, uh, Gilbert? No. Just appreciate everybody. Um, any questions? Uh, can I give out my... Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, just please. Uh, any questions? I'm always available. I prefer. I'm old school. I like calls. Call me. 323-303-9000. <laughs> yeah. uh, Good. Okay. Let's see what old, happens. Old school works. Uh, you know, people are scared to call. Yeah, I don't understand. Yeah, well, they... I don't know. It's, my cell phone wasn't working this morning, so old school works, but new school has a problem at times. <laughs> Gilbert, thanks thank you, much. sir. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. And thank you all. That's our show for today. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode and would like to support the show, please like and subscribe, share on social media, or leave a review. You can find us on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Rumble, or your favorite podcast app. Visit us online at mfgtalkradio.com for our other episodes. We have also included links to our advertisers below. Thanks again, and we'll see you next week.